Welcome to Try Not to Overthink It. I'm RJ. I'm Unique. And I'm Khalil. Every day we find ourselves trying to make sense of this crazy thing that we call life. As peers in the healthcare profession, we find ourselves discussing and debating many different topics. After many heated debates, we decided to both expand upon these topics and give them to you from our viewpoint as licensed therapists and social workers. If this is your first time here, we'd like to thank you for checking us out and we hope that you'll become part of the tribe and participate in the conversations. So today we have a guest. Anna um, is my sister. Hi. Um, so she is going to be joining us for today's episode because today's episode is one that she is a a, a huge proponent of, and we are going to be talking about uh, the importance of parenthood. So with her being a parent, I felt that it was important to get her perspective on the topic of parenthood and to see what she thought about parenthood because for children, you know, Every child needs a parent. It doesn't necessarily have to be someone that you share G DNA with, but it needs to be somebody that is geared towards helping you be the best version of yourself, that is going to guide you and mentor you and help shape you and help prepare you for what life has to offer. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't always have to be someone that you sh share DNA with. Sometimes it is, but in today's society, you're seeing that more so that it is not. It can be an aunt, an uncle, um, your football coach, a basketball coach. You know, somebody that you look up to and somebody that you hold a great level of respect for. So um, I thought it was important for us to kind of talk about that, especially with, you know, today's society and the way that things have kind of shifted, you know, especially when we were kids and in, in comparison to how they are now. So what do you guys think about that? I would like to just jump into the fact in black communities, um, because that's the community I know the most about. Mm -hmm. um, we have always had multiple parents and aunties, people you share no blood relationship to, but mm -hmm. that your mama's best friend is your aunt, her kids are your cousins, your football coach can be your uncle, the pastor is your, your godfather, your parents never really officially decided that, but it's official and for all intents and purposes, okay? Oh, yeah. Um, you got godparents and nieces and nephews yeah that's my niece and you they know they're no, no type of relationship to you but these same people do offer some role of guidance you know mm -hmm. in our communities we have always i mean from the time that we came to this land to now you know even today with people being so disjointed i think you still see how the familial union is strong in black communities where you get pulled up Right, you, my kid cannot go outside of my house and start cussing, cause somebody's black mom is gonna get her together. Hey, little yeah, girl, for sure. You need to watch your mouth. <laughs> and I'm not gonna come at that mom and be like, "Don't talk to my kid that way." Depending on you know what the extent of what my child said and what this mama didn't say, I'm gonna mm -hmm. be a little more little more lenient. I might even fuss, you know, at the at the mother, but I'm gonna do it in private. And I'm going to get home to my kid. Why are you out there embarrassing me? Then mm -hmm. you got people thinking I'm a bad mama. Because yeah. you out there acting crazy. But that is just something I think in our community that I like. You know, whether you are upscale or to the not so upscale. You know, because this is a podcast. We're educated. So the not upscale. Yes. I mean, I, 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 I agree with you um, because like it, like we've all heard it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the village in effect. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody in the village was always looking out for the children that are playing or the children that are doing whatever they're doing. And I think that, you know, parenthood is one of those jobs where it doesn't get enough praise and it doesn't get enough, you know, support and admiration because it's hard being a parent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard just watching kids, period. Right. Because especially as you get older, you, you ain't got the energy you used to have. And you'd be wanting to lay down and take a nap and you can't because your kid wants to play or your kid wants to do something. And so as a, as a parent, you you have to be constantly on the go and because it's no longer about you. It's, a, it's about it's about them. And, and I think that for a lot of us, you know, we don't we don't like if, if you had to have a conversation with yourself from, you know, like from where you are now, I guarantee you, you would tell yourself to listen more to your parents be more respectful to your parents and heed the lessons that they're providing you because 
there are lessons at, you know, me and Anna have talked about this on numerous times. There are lessons that my parents gave me that in that moment, as a child, I didn't understand them. But now as an adult, I see, I see the benefit of what they were saying. At that time, I couldn't see because I was in it. But now that I made it to the other side and I'm grown now, I see the difference. I, I see the difference in, in how important those lessons and having someone invested in me being the best mm-hmm. version of myself. Because, you know, a lot of parents and speaking from the therapist standpoint, I've seen where some parents are not as invested in their children and it turns into something that could have been prevented earlier on in life. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and me and Anna, we were talking about this one day. I was like, yo, I used to think, I used to think mom was crazy. I used to think dad was crazy too. But man, you know, I just interacted with this, this particular client. I'm like, I thank God. Like when I, like when I got done dealing with the client, I had to pray. Like, thank God for, you know, my parents being in my life because that could have been me. This is something that we've talked about before. Nobody lays it out for you on this is how to do it. You go with what you have. And, you know, I look at just my parents and some of the lessons that I've gained beneficial. And then some of them was like, okay, that didn't apply to me. But I I do look back and say my parents were the best parents that they could be based on the knowledge that they had, based on what they were exposed to. They gave Mm -hmm. me, and I can fairly say my parents gave me everything that they had. Mm -hmm. Um, And so while I might not teach those same principles or I might some of those principles I might not impart to my child because she lives a whole different a totally different life than I live. Um but I think the principles are still the same, right? Where, okay, you do this because I it's it's gonna benefit you down the line. And if it doesn't, great. But if it does, you have it in your wheelhouse, you have it in your toolkit to use it. One of the things that my mother used to always say to me and I was just like I'm probably not going to say that when I have a kid, but mark my words, I have, you might not appreciate it now, but you're going to appreciate it later. Right. And I tell, I tell Rue that all the time. You, the stuff that I'm teaching you now is because one day I'm not going to be in control of your life. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be responsible for your life. You will be, and you're going to need these lessons. You're going to need to understand this. You're going to need to have this discipline because one day, you're going to be responsible for your life and maybe someone else's. And I want to make sure you knew it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that sounds like a similar conversation I've had with my daughter on multiple occasions. Something as simple as cleaning the house, you know, make sure you do it the right way so that yep. when you Ooh. finally move out of my home and mm-hmm. I am child free, um, <laughs> house, house, Clean, you know, and no one's going to come to your house and they're not going to say, oh, she's disgusting. Oh, her bathroom is nasty or, oh, she can't wash the dishes or whatever. No, yeah. ma'am, the, the time to learn the lesson is now. And, you know, like in the military, they say something very simple, right? They say or something very similar. I'm trusting you to do the small things now. So when I give you bigger tasks to do, you can complete those larger tasks. Anna, and then stay, out just, my house. stay out my house, Anna. Right. Well, I mean, honestly, that you know, that's that's what they teach us in the army, right? Like as something as simple as arriving to formation on time in the correct uniform at the right place. Very simple, very simple, you know, principles, you know, just very easy to follow. But if you can't even do that, how can I, when it's your turn to lead, how can I as a leader as well trust you to follow my orders and to lead these other people? I can't. So you Maybe have to time to defend. How you gonna be at the right place when we trying to meet up and you know square up against the enemy? Where you at? You exactly. That's that's exactly right. I can't trust you to protect my back or anyone else's back if you don't show up on time or if you can't be in the right uniform. Yeah, I I will say that I agree wholeheartedly with what you guys are saying because I mean there are a lot of things that I that I do now because our parents were on us when we were children. Mm-hmm. Like being respectful to other people. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Like I have, you know, or yes, sir. No, sir. I have people tell me, hey, you don't have to call me ma'am or sir, you know, but for for me as the, as, as the, as, as a, as a well, well well-rounded individual, because I got those life lessons, Mm -hmm. I was taught to lead with respect. Mm -hmm. And so when you lead with respect, a lot of people will auto-correct because they realize they're being disrespectful to you and you're not being disrespectful to them. 
You know, I was taught to share. I was taught to value other people, not to take other people for granted. Those were lessons that my parents instilled in me because, you know, what, what a lot of people don't understand, like when it comes to parenthood, you know, it's kind of like, you know, a, a piece of artwork. You are responsible for shaping this lump of clay into a, a one of a kind masterpiece yeah. or, you know, you for painting. Know look like. You don't know what's no, you, 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 exactly. And so when it comes to being a parent, parenting never stops. It doesn't just stop when your kid becomes 18. Like even now being at 35, my dad still give Anna, does he not? He, he still does. gives us lessons to this day. He says, he says now. fatherhood sucks. <laughs> it's like <laughs> It sucks. <laughs> you gotta do parenting until you die. Yeah. Um, but what RJ was talking about reminds me of when I worked uh, with juveniles and, um, you know, being a social worker and you get to actually talk to people's parents, you get to see their living environment, stuff like that. Not everybody is cultivating that type of uh, growth for their children. They're not putting into them. They're not shaping them. They're not molding them. Not everybody does that. Um, just because we came from good houses, you know what I mean? I came from a single family house. My mom tried her best. She always tried to guide me. A lot of people don't have that guidance in the home. Mm -hmm. Their parents uh, are either locked up on drugs um, uh, or they're just not putting that time into them. They're putting in mm -hmm. other things because they yep. had babies having babies, you know, uh, people who were 15 with a child, you know what I mean? Their priorities are a lot different than someone who's 28, 29, having a child. So when you talk to some of these parents and you talk to these kids, they don't have respect. They don't know how to treat another individual. Because um, they never saw it. They never saw it. And you do what you see. And so when you're meeting some people, like I have to remember that not everybody got the same lessons I got. Not everybody's parents were involved in present mm -hmm. because if I'm getting high and I'm intoxicated every day, it means I'm not present because I'm not dealing in reality and time and space with the, re with the regular people that are going to work, coming back home and trying to raise, raise their kids. So when I had to deal with people like that, I used to take it for granted. And like y'all said, when I go back and listen to some of the things my mother told me, I was like, some of these kids have never heard these clean up your room, make sure you, uh, you, you look good on your first appearance for people so they respect you. Go to the job, go to mm -hmm. the job interview, uh, wearing some khakis and, and a dress shirt. You're making a good appearance. Um, you know what I mean? Brush your teeth. People, you, we take it for granted. There's a lot of people who did not grow up with that instruction. You know, just go out and do whatever you had to do to get this money. Get it how you live. And I mean, I, I, will, I will say that I had that very same conversation with a client back at Christmas time um, at the inpatient facility. I was, you know, they were short staffed. So they asked me to work. I came to work, sat down, talked to her. This is my first time, like, you know, she's fairly notorious. Um, so, but this is my first time, like I've had conversations with her in passing, like, Hey, how are you? Cause whenever I walk into a room, I address everyone to stare. Hey, what's up? Hey, how are you? You've been helped today. You've been helped already. Someone's, someone's assisted you. And so, um, the director asked me to have a conversation with her, just sit down and talk to her. And so I sit down and I'm talking to her and we talked for about a good hour and a half. And so, um, she had a baby. Uh, well, she, she was pregnant with twins. One of the twins didn't make it. And, um, the other, the other baby is in DHR custody. So there's scheduled supervised visitation. And so one of the things that stood out to me and I had to explain to her was she said that when she is spending time with her child, she doesn't have that connection with her child. She doesn't feel that connection. Like as a parent, as a mom, like I carried this baby for nine months. And I don't have that connection. I don't feel that love for my child like a mom should feel for, 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 for their child. And like I had to explain to her, you can't give something to somebody that you never received yourself. Mm -hmm. wow. And because she's never received unconditional positive regard and unconditional love and just someone loving on her throughout her entire life, it affected her ability to be a parent herself. And so... We, well, we got to look at the definition of parent. I mean, I talked to my kid about this. I had one of my kids in therapy and going through some stuff with the biological parent, just for her anonymity, mm -hmm. going through some biological stuff. I mean, some stuff with her biological parent and we define like what a parent is. A parent means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For some people, for sure. it's 
just means this is the person who gave you your DNA, mm -hmm. right? So for, you know, by definition, yes, they're your parent. For other people, that means a caregiver, a protector, a provider. Um, and so a parent looks different. A parent could be a big sister or big brother or grandmother mm -hmm. um, or aunt. So when you are breaking down, I think something that we have to look at with our clients and just people in general, I tell my clients all the time, be careful of giving people a label and automatically assigning expectations. Right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Right? Right. Right. When I tell my daughter, I'm a mom, I'm your mom, there are certain roles and expectations that I want her to have. And so I demonstrate that for her. So that way, when she says mom, she's already attaching, well, a mother does this, 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 and that. Right. Right. I love so a that. A lot of people, though, they are giving these labels to people. Right. And baby, they ain't worth the paper that is written on. I'm, you know, I'm going to steal your line now. I'm, 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 right, I'm writing that down. I'm stealing it. Yeah. <laughs> Still, but I think, you know, when we are looking at our communities and because we talk to a lot of people who are looking for help, who are looking for some type of guidance, be careful of giving somebody a label and they're not putting in the work to that. Yeah, for sure. You can be a mother without being a parent. You can yeah. be a father biologically without being a parent. Oh, yeah. Parent is something totally different when mm -hmm. you start to put those things together. Now, a mother can be a parent and a father can be a parent. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure you're clearly defining the two, right? Mm -hmm. And if you find that this person is not measuring up to the caregiver, protector, nurturer, you might want to reevaluate that. that. Right. Okay. I'm not saying you're next out of my life. We talked about that before where Roger Mel will cancel you. So if you're close and you're not living up to it, Roger will cancel you. Anna, Anna, is she lying? She is not. And I don't understand why he's like that. Yeah. Because he, he listen, you got, you got, you only get one time to burn me. Roger Mel. One time. She one said time. Ladies and gentlemen, find my website. We could talk about not doing that. That is absolutely not the right thing to do. Okay, don't cut the people off, but you can redefine their placement in your life. Oh, yeah, I do. Well, you need what you're talking about. You, you put them out, Roger Mill. No, I, I mean, no, I listen. Like you said, I redefine their position and their role. So you're like, once I redefine your position and your role as outside the circle of trust, while the rest of us are inside of it, waving and having a good time, and you know, you out there looking, looking in, looking at all the greatness that you could have been okay. a part of. Okay, Robert De Niro. Right, that's right. What Unique was describing there, right, was uh, trying to get people to have a different way of perceiving certain things that maybe naturally uh, we try to label people, right? Mm -hmm. I know I like I told you when I started working with them juveniles, I was like, man, I, I, I thought that was his dad. His dad is his dad is some garbage, right? Um, you know, and, and you, you get in your head and you expect people to meet these expectations, which isn't right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, we, we talked about it before, like a lot of people expect uh their kids to be fine on the phone and on social media all day. I, social media can't raise a child. Excuse me. Mm -mm. They have these expectations that that's fine because they're they're on they're on their uh they're doing their classwork on on Google and they're doing this and do they're doing everything under the sun on their phones and you mm -hmm. have to monitor it. So I'm going to talk to speak to the two um the two ladies with the younger parents right now. How are you monitoring those uh your child right now, Anna and and Unique? How are y'all monitoring your kids with the social media? How crazy it is right now. Um, so for my daughter, she has zero social media presence. Um, when she, when I'm on Facebook and she's trying to peep over my shoulder and look, she gets a straight mush to the head because get out of here. Um, if we, if we get on YouTube, it's something that I feel is age appropriate for her. We'll watch stuff together. Um, she has access to YouTube kids, but that is strictly set by a specific age limit. So she's not watching anything too crazy. And then when it comes to like using like a cell phone, she has one, but her cell phone only has like 
uh, family members' phone numbers programmed into it. She knows she is not allowed to get on the internet. And I do check because all of her accounts are my accounts. So everything you do, I see it. Um, and I make that very clear to her. If I catch you on something that you're not supposed to be on, there will be dire consequences. Like right now, she's on a two-week punishment suspension from all of her electronics because she don't know how to act. Wow. Um, so, oh, you know, I just, I just, I try to make sure like I'm monitoring the things that she does. And, you know, we, we had a couple of issues with her being on YouTube without me, um, when we first started like watching YouTube like a year ago, uh, and I made sure I, I made it very clear to her, I will catch you. It is my account. There is a history. Um, and if I catch you doing it again, this you and I are cool like history. <laughs> you know, you're going to have, you're gonna have some problems. You know? But like, but that's how I handle it. I don't know if you need, if you do it a little differently, but that's, that's how I, no, I, I, listen, my baby, she just lost her Netflix privileges. Oh, wow. See? Because look, look, I said, you know, this show, um, we were watching a particular show together and the show had some, I didn't feel like it was age appropriate for kids. I think mm -hmm. everybody's house is different, but in my house, we were, it's a little bit more strict. Uh, well, I shouldn't say strict. It, I am very selective about what I allow my child to watch independently of me. And As you should be. As you should right. be, yeah. And so we were watching something together, and it raised a topic that I said, this is not for a nine-year-old. So we're done okay. with this show. Mm -hmm. My girl said, okay, she, well, you know, dang it. She was like, you're done with the show, but I'm not. I'm no, not. No, no, I got to no, finish no, that. No, no. Right. So I said... Well, how did you start watching this show to begin with? Because I started watching this show with you. You told me about the show. I said, oh, well, let's watch it together. She says, well, I got on it on Netflix Kids. I was like, no, you have a kid's account. What you mean you got on it on Netflix Kids? No, the other kid's account. I said, so you be watching the other kid's account? No, 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 no. I said, well, I could just cut it off. Because if you don't watch that one, I should just block that account. She's like, well, that's where I watch my other show. I thought you said you didn't. Right. I thought you said you didn't watch the right. other Ooh, account because the other account is not regulated. Like it, it can you can watch like PG. I think um, Netflix case goes up to like PG thirteen even. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like, sis, you are watching things. I said, now if I go through this history, I said, how much you want to bet that I'm gonna find more than those two shows? No, no, mommy, no, no, no. Get her. I said, bring it here. Just just go ahead and leave your tablet right there. I said, I'm going to tell you this. When you go to click on Netflix, because you don't know my login, okay? I paid the Netflix account, and you don't know the login. I said, you will have a Netflix, but you will be able to do nothing on it. So she forgot. I gave her the tablet back. We did not have a conversation. I felt like I didn't need to discuss what I already knew was going to be on it. Right. Her little friend came over on Sunday. One of her best friends I was wanted to watch Netflix. She gets the tablet. My Netflix is not working. And I told her friend, you know why it's not working? <laughs> Being super petty. Super petty. <laughs> not petty. The reality is because this little girl, she comes to my house often. And so and I, Ruth goes to her house often. Mm -hmm. What I want my child to know is if it's not good for you in, in private, it's not going to be good for you in public. I don't care who's around. My rules don't change. Yeah. The expectation doesn't change. Yeah. Not for your friends, not for your grandmama, who's my mama, who thinks she mm -hmm. runs my house when it comes to her. No. Oh, my God. I, our, I, our parents are like that. They completely different now. No. Okay. You don't watch it at my house. You don't watch it there. Right. Yeah. I don't allow her to do TikTok. She does no TikTok. None of that. If we're going to do TikTok, it's going to be because I taught you this TikTok dance. Uh, unfortunately, though, because I'm with Anna, I regulate everything. Ruth does not have a phone yet because I'm not ready to cross that bridge. We already have. We're dealing with crushes. Anna, I don't know if you you and your baby are dealing with crushes yet. She strongly dislikes all boys, so it's fine. So, yeah. It's a good thing for right I now. I wish. I wish. Yeah. We've already dealt with emailing the crush. So. Yeah. How does she know how to? How does she know how to work a computer to email somebody? Well, that's what so, they you know because you know these kids, you gotta take you have to take a laptop to school, right? Oh, yeah. that's what I was saying. Her school is social a media, yeah, is, her a, is, a tech is ruling school school. for children right now. They, yeah, have, they have to, to take school. It. They got to email the teacher in class. Mm -hmm. They email the teacher. Yeah, I mean, like this is so they're emailing each other on yeah. on other little accounts. 
where they can yeah. email the people in your classrooms, all that. So that's what I'm saying. It's very difficult Let to me, police it right now. But I think it's not that it's difficult to police. I tell my child this. I'm like, Anna, I'm going to know it all because mm -hmm. I was nine once. And see, I wasn't a sneaky nine-year-old, but I've lived long enough to know the things that people can do. Right. So I'm going to check your stuff just randomly. Let me see right. that laptop for a second. Yeah, exactly. Let me, let me is that your, I didn't buy that journal. Where's that from? What's yep. that song? I never, I've never played that song for you. Where you hear that song at? I'm in my daughter's business. I check the backpack. I check the tablet. I go through her WhatsApp because she has family in another country. I check the WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. What is she saying to him when she's on the phone with said family on WhatsApp? I keep my door open. She better have her door open because I want to. What do you think? What's being said? Yeah, you it's have to pay for your bills. Yeah, and if I'm gonna have to stand before the good Lord and give an account i need to know what i'm giving an account for forget a judge on this earth i'm not going to hell because you sneaky yeah <laughs> i i i i i go to hell because you sneaky i i i 100 agree with that i mean like what both of you guys were talking about you know you guys are planting seeds in your job in regards to you guys being invested in them and you caring about what they're doing and who they're doing it with. And that seed branches into, you know, turns into a tree, which blossoms fruit. And a lot of people do not get that lesson. They do not get that lesson of someone having those conversations. One of the things I used to hate as a kid that I watch Hannah do now as an adult. Our mom used to talk to us about everything. When she was about to give us a whooping, she talking to us before the whooping, during the whooping and after the whooping. And I remember, and I remember one time, you know, I just asked her one time, can you please, can we please just not do the talk? Can I just get the whooping already? Can, can we not do the talking? But, you know, be, being, a, being an adult, I will say, because I watched an episode of Keita Rose uh, this, this morning on YouTube, and she was talking about the difference between, you know, being a permissive parent. And I can't remember what the other type of parent she was talking about, but she was explaining that just you know, kids don't understand things and kids a lot of times don't even understand why they do what they do. Right. And so just think about it from you, from a perspective of you going to work. If you go to work and you don't understand something and your, your, your boss's first inclination is to spank you or to dole out some sort of physical punishment, did that help you understand what you didn't understand? Mm -hmm. It Not didn't. You know, and that was one thing that I didn't understand as a kid. I just thought my mom was just, again, being crazy. You know, why can't you just give me the whooping and just be done with it? You got to have a conversation with me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, but her having a conversation with me made me understand why I was facing the punishment that I was facing mm -hmm. because right. it helped me learn if I don't want to get this consequence, then don't do this certain thing mm -hmm. because we had a conversation before, during and after. Yeah. And like, not all punishment needs to be physical punishment. Right. You know, sometimes a conversation is enough because like there are times like where I've sat, I've sat in this house with Anna and watched her explain something to me. And that was enough. Just the conversation of do not do this. If you do this, this is going to happen. You know, Anna, Anna will be like, you know, we got to take better care of our things. Yes. And... <laughs> 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 and so you know my niece will be yes ma'am i'm sorry and so that was enough there was not there was there was no raising voices there was no you know degrading no belittling or anything like that there was there, there was no there was no belts there was there was no need for corporal punishment it was just she asked a simple question what she's doing is building her cognitive reasoning yes. abilities right? oh yeah and so that's something that in my house, just today, I tell you, my child keeps me close to God. <laughs> my prayer life is enriched by being a mama. If you want to get close to God, get a child. Right. Oh my gosh. They're going to take you to hell of heaven. They're going to take you to hell of heaven. But this little girl, I told her, I said, well, she had a watch. She gave the watch to one of the friends. The friend lost the watch. Well, this person lost my watch. I said, no, no, sis. It's your watch. You lost it. So 
you needed to watch so when you go outside you can tell the time to come back in the house right because mm -hmm. at nine i don't need to start i gotta start releasing some of this autonomy to you right this right. is the time i'm expecting you to come in come in at that time you don't have a time machine now you don't know what right. time is going to be because you can't tell time with the skin of your wrist mm -hmm. So she lost the watch. I said, well, I guess you don't need to go outside until you can get another watch. And my kid has money. I said, I'm not buying another watch. So you have an option. You can either not go outside or you can buy another watch. She but looked she sad. Money. I, didn't, I didn't fuss. I didn't yell. I said, you sad about it? She said, I am. I said, well, I guess you learned that lesson, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. I just let life hit, because I said, life going to hit you harder than I ever could, baby. If you don't mm -hmm. get these lessons, trust me, yeah. you're going to grow up one day and you're going to say, oh, I should have listened to mom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that actually sounds like a similar conversation Raj and I have had about my daughter. Um, he's like, you know, sometimes the reason why she doesn't take things so seriously is because you come behind her and like you clean it up. And she, mm -hmm. she has even made the comment, I think she was like three or four something she broke something or something went missing and i was she on deployment. Lost it. yeah so i was on deployment my mom had her and so she tells my mom oh well that's okay mommy will just buy a new one oh. <laughs> <laughs> look that's how so, so you know um a part of me wanted to get upset like how dare you tell her that then another part was like i mean it's true I will. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have the means to do that. Um, but now it's gotten to a point where she's gotten, she's starting to get a little bit better. But now it's gotten to a point where it's like, you know, much like Raj just mentioned, where I, you know, where I'm kind of like, well, you know, we have to take care of our stuff. And she does to a point. But then there's certain, there's certain things like she had a tablet. She had an Amazon uh, Fire Kids tablet, whatever it is. And I continue to tell her, Mia, hey, when you're taking your bath, don't put the tablet next to the bathtub because it's gonna eventually oh. or you're gonna get it wet. Like put it on the toilet so like you can you have some standoff Watch and you know, mm -hmm. right. And so that didn't happen. Time and time again, I have told my child that time and time again she ignored me. So what does it do? It falls in the tub. Then mm -hmm. she's panicking afterwards because the tablet won't turn on. And I was like, Well, <laughs> what's the problem right like what happened and she, didn't want to me what she happened? was expecting she's expecting a mass casualty oh she was, you know, she's expecting to just be torn apart limb by limb um and i was like what happened sis and she's like oh it fell in the tub oh it no. did now i could have sworn i told you since you've had a tablet don't put it next to the bathtub so i mean it took me about it took me about a week to get her another tablet but i was like if i can't just get a replacement from Amazon for free, you're not getting another tablet. Because I I told you time and time again, I've asked you on multiple occasions with various items you have to take care of your things. Like that's just so important. And also while mommy has a good career that pays her very well to do look next to nothing, I don't want to spend all my money buying things for you continually, like time after time after time. Like that starts to get on my nerves. I get on my own nerves when I waste my own money. I'm gonna how, like how much faster will you get on my nerves wasting my money? So I ask you, I ask that you take care of the things. And you know, like you guys have said, that's something that our parents instilled in us. You have to take care of your stuff. You mm -hmm. have to you have to. It's called you know, it's just be a good steward of your Ooh, things right. that of the things that people give you, even if you didn't earn it yourself, just or you didn't purchase it yourself or whatever. Be a good steward of those things. Yep. Right. That's it. Period. And I think, you know, I think that's a a good foundational principle just for parenthood. Like be a good steward of the things that you're given, whether it's a child or your child gets an electronic or your child gets a new fancy toy, whatever. Be a good steward. Yeah. I want to say like for as a parent, and I mean parents chime in, parent and uncle parent. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, uncle uncle sibling. Uncle sibling. Uncle sibling. <laughs> Well, I'm saying because you know you step in, you take care. Mia looks up to you just yes as an uncle, but I'm more I'm more like, I'm more like I'm more like a sibling. I'm more like a sibling. Uh, like an older brother. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. like another child in my house. Yeah, right. Yeah. Anna's taking care of both of y'all. Yeah, like a sibling. More like a sibling. 
you know, she ain't got no siblings. So, you know, I got to fill that role. I got to fill that role. Right. Parenthood brings you either closer to God or takes you to hell. And I'm going to pray for you. When I'm on my mother knees, I'm going to add you in like the mom. Thank you. Journal. I appreciate it. Pray that she don't hurt. <laughs> hey, seriously. I'm not worried about her daughter. I'm worried about <laughs> that okay. one right there. She's going to yoke him up. But, uh, but as a parent, I guess, how do you balance that, the role of parenting your kid and being the example that your kid looks up to? Because you're still an adult, you still live life, and you don't have all of the answers. So how do you balance that while you have an impressionable person in your in your care? It's hard. It's so hard. Sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm a prolific uh, user of profanity. Um, oh, and so, so you know, I, I try not to be, you know, um, I, I do my best not to say it in front of her. But sometimes, boy, I tell you, that joint just ooh, just comes right on out. Um, yeah. It's it's difficult, you know, but what really kind of like keeps me in line and, and forces me to like readjust is when I see her exhibiting some of those behaviors that I've done in the past that I don't want her to have. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to keep her as fresh and clean and innocent as I possibly can for as long as I can. Um, so when, you know, I also, I have a tendency to talk about people. Um, so when I hear, <laughs> when I hear her talking about people, I'm like, ooh, Maybe. 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 <laughs> well, well. So, so, so. This is the thing. So, in your defense, it's not one hundred percent your fault. It's my fault too. Okay, I, well, I, because I do it. Because be, be, because Anna, Anna will be. My, my, I'm on, you're on speakerphone. I'll be. I'll just be going. Anna be like right. you're on speakerphone. Me can hear you. And then you, you she's absolutely. She she's at. Yeah. Sometimes I have said that. Sometimes I. Sometimes I have said that. But one thing I will say is that Anna Anna said something that was very true. Kids do emulate. Yes, do. Kids do emulate you. And I remember when Mia was real small. She was what, like th two or three? And it was me and my brother were watching her. And I took a comb, like one of those wide tooth combs that has the wire handle on it. I took the comb and I stuck my brother with it. So I stuck him with it, not like 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 really hard, but just stuck him with it, right? So I put the comb down. She picks the comb up. She's running behind him. Yeah. Just I mean, he, he he trips and falls, and when he trips and falls, she jumps on him and it's just. And so I'm recording it. I sent it to Anna. Anna was like, "I can't believe you taught my child that." I didn't know she. I didn't know she. I didn't know she had seen me do that. You know, no different than uh, feeding, feeding, feeding Anna's dog, Kylie. You know, I'm chucking food to Kylie and Mia being a baby, she seen me do it. So she take a bite off the French fry and give, give the other half of the French fry to the dog. Mm -hmm. Take a bite off the chicken nugget, give another part of the chicken nugget to the dog. Oh, she's a shiver. So, I mean, they're, they're, those are things that I can say that as, you know, as an adult that has spent time around a child, and we spoke about this in previous episodes about spirit of influence. The things that you say and do impact other people that are around you, that you come in contact with. And, you know, it, it becomes one of those things where the things that you want for children that you are involved with or come in contact with or that you are attempting to help raise or raising, the things that you want them to be great at, you have to exhibit those things. Yep. Right. Yep. Because they become real at that point. When I can see it, physically see it, I can touch it. Like with my parents going, my parents graduating college, my parents going to work and having careers. Right. I can touch that. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yep. So I'm more likely to do things that I can see as real and not something that's imaginary. Because it's imaginary to watch LeBron James be on TV and win a championship and think I can be LeBron James. Mm -hmm. But when I grow up in the house of LeBron James and I see LeBron James every day, I get a chance to experience LeBron James within arm's distance. Guess what? I'm more likely to become like LeBron James. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's one thing that I will say that, you know, for Anna as a parent, you know, Anna always tries to exhibit, you know, excellence in front of her child. Now, we all fall short and we all aren't always able to be perfect all the time. But one of the things that I will say that Anna tries to do is exhibit that. 
Because again, when you set that expectation, like you talked about earlier, the expectation, when you set that expectation, your child is more likely to follow it versus when you're do as I say and not as I do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I find that that's a ahead, very Khalil. difficult thing for people. Um, if you have a parent that says that to you, oh, do as I say, not as I do. Um, you got to lead by example. Kids see everything you do. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And when you don't think that they're learning that, uh, you know, when I'm with my stepson, he's 16, like he got a speeding ticket. Well, every time he's with me, I'm, I'm always cautious of how fast I'm driving. I'm always bringing that up to him. Hey, make sure you know you're doing the speed limit. You know what I mean? When he forgot his first car, I was like, hey, you know, you're supposed to clean that car, right? You know what I mean? You got a car, you got to clean it. You got to keep it neat. You know what I mean? And and those are some things that like uh, when you don't have a parent that's going to show you the right way to do things, you're always going to end up uh, being behind. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I, for real, like I, I wish I had um, my dad actually show me the right way to do certain things, because there's a lot of stuff that uh, my mom could not show me being a woman mm-hmm. to have some good guidance when you're a male especially the way things are right now, a lot of families are broken. Uh, there, there aren't two parents in a household mm-hmm. that male influence. You need someone, uh, uh, women and men, both children need to have that male influence um, in someone showing you and guiding you and showing you how a man's supposed to treat a woman. All right. And it goes vice versa. You know what I mean? I'm always telling my stepson, cause he's got a little girlfriend. I'm like, Hey, did you offer? Why she got to be a little girlfriend? You know how it is. You got your little girlfriend. You know how we do. You know, you got your little car, you got your little girlfriend, you get your little job. <laughs> you know, how do people do that? But I, I just these babies. And you know, but, no, but I, I'm so I'm telling them, I'm like, this is how you're going to have to take her out sometimes. Get her, you know, get her yeah. some flowers, man. Go in the yeah. store and go and get it. Get her a nice card. You know, do those yeah. things. Um, mm-hmm. And I wish my dad would have said those type of things. I, I had my older sister used to put me up on game, though. She, she did put me up on game, but I wish I had a dad who would have shown me how to treat women the right way in some aspects. Um, you know, my mom did the best she can. My mom wasn't trying to hear me treat no woman to nothing. You know what I mean? She was like, well, you don't need no woman. But uh, I still needed to learn those things. And I had to learn it through trial and error. And you need to have someone who's going to guide you when it comes to uh, social interaction. Mm-hmm. On how, like I said, how a man's supposed to treat the woman. I do that with my daughter. I'm like, hey, that man's supposed to treat you like gold if he wants to yeah. be with you. And you oh, yeah. that. You have be the that. prize, as Unique says. Yeah, oh, be on. the prize. That's, that's Troy Rand, yeah. baby. That yeah. is Troy Rand all the way. <laughs> yeah. um, what you guys are talking about is something that I think people have to really pull the lesson out. Children will remember, they will remember longer what you showed them or what you demonstrated for them far longer than anything you've taught them or told them. Right. Like I just said, my dad would say, you're the prize. But my daddy treated us like we were the prize. Mm-hmm. There was nothing to this day. If I call my dad on the phone and tell him I need some money, well, well what is Brian doing? You know, right. that's all right. how much you need, baby. It don't matter. It's going to get handled. Okay. Pa- Pastor Troy, my hero. <laughs> Listen, do you need daddy to roll up? My dad always trying to roll up on somebody. I'd be like, please stop. <laughs> I think it's beyond those years of rolling up. I think I got it from here, big fella. But we felt like the prize, my sisters and I, like we saw him do that for our mom. My mother probably didn't start pumping gas until 20, probably like 2012. And that's because she decided she wanted to be grown and go back to work. She didn't pump no gas. We asked the woman, Ma, how much does such and so, how much does an average light bill cost? Well, no, I, I was living in my on my own. And my mom was like, how come you don't have no money? Like, you go to work every day. How come you don't have no money? I said, mom, because I'm single and I have to pay all my bills. Well, <laughs> you should have money left over. I said, but I don't. She was like, she just couldn't get it. Why? Because my dad pays all of the bills. Right. My mother's money was to take care of the kids and whatever else she wanted. My dad would say, you pay for the food because you cook. I don't cook. So you pay, you worry about the food and the kids. I will handle everything else. 
So that was something that we witnessed. It wasn't something my dad said all the time. But now in my house, well, I, I still take care of things because I just like to. But that when I talk about feeling like the prize, I didn't come into my marriage feeling like, oh, I have to be this alpha woman. No, I just take care of stuff because I like it. I'm really, I'm good at it and I like to do it. But I don't know. My husband just fixed some brakes today. How did he do it? How much did the brakes cost? Couldn't tell you. He told I said, I don't want to know about that. Well, why not? I said, because I have you. Well, what if something happens to me? I got my daddy. Well, what if something happened to him? I got two brothers. Come on. <laughs> you winning. You're you winning all around the board. Winning. <laughs> you ruined me, okay? <laughs> he said I didn't have to do those things. I had a great dad. I did not have to do those things. But those are lessons that I'm hearing you guys talk about in the importance of not being perfect for your kid. That's what I wanted to point out. It's not about being perfect, but it's about being intentional about the life you live. So and consistent. Children, and consistent, right? Yep. I don't eat dinner every night with my kid, but eight, eight nights out of 10, we're going to sit down together. We're going to watch something on the TV because I'm training her up, right? You got to have a good show while you eating. Oh, you my do. God. These, you really do. Oh, my you God. Start, you just started a bad you trend. It's a black people tradition. That so is. Watch that something is. with your family while why you eating. Come on. Yes. And you talk about it. We talk about the show. It's not like we just watching in silence. How was your day? Did you see that? Look at her. That's an ugly dress. Why she wear that? Bro, why? why? She just need yes. Yeah. Bro, why, why Anna and Mia do that? Anna and Mia do that. They do that. They do that. It's bonding. But it I is I'm bonding. Showing, yeah, I'm showing her that you can, we can have a moment together. And that moment does not have to be filled with anything serious. It can be filled with us just enjoying something. It's our tradition. So much so, she'll say, Mom, you want to get the tablet? I said, yep. what you trying to watch something, girl? We This is a short <laughs> meal. Uh-uh, we're just doing a little 15-minute dinner. She's like, oh, we're not watching no TV? So I've cultivated that with her where now sometimes my husband will be there, sometimes he's working, but even when he's present, and she'll be looking at him like, oh, you're not. You, you wasn't planning on watching nothing with us? <laughs> and he's like, is that a thing? I was like, it is. I mean, it, it is now. <laughs> But that's yeah. something where she grows up. Do I want her to watch TV with her kids? No, that's not the lesson. But I want her to have intentional time every day. Quality like, time. Yeah, like the people that you love, you make time for them. I will mm -hmm. stop and notes need to be written, podcasts need to be recorded, and I will say, well, I got to go eat dinner with her. Even if it's 15 minutes, we'll eat that dinner, and then I'll go do whatever I need to do next. Yeah, so, make it, making her a priority. Yeah, I want her to feel my mom did that. Yeah, yeah I, she's a business owner, but she made time for dinner. I I will say that. Yeah. If you know, like for for a lot of us, you know, and I had this conversation with one of the pastors in my church, uh, one of the ministers in my church. You know, the time and energy you don't put into your kid, somebody or something else will. Right. right. And you will not you will not have any control over exactly what it was that they received. And for a lot of us, because again, like you, like you guys were saying, you guys watch shows, you make that time for your kid to teach them the lessons, to instill in them the, the lessons. And, you know, because experience is bought and paid for. You don't have to experience something firsthand to recognize it's not a good idea. That's Very one of the, that's one of, oh. that's one of my dad's many life lessons. That and, that, that, that and graphic illustration. He will, boy, he, he. He loves to go back to that all the time. That's an illustration. You want people, you got to get smacked upside the head by something. But, you know, the thing is, you know, as, as a parent, you're the person that tested everything out so that you can give your kid the cheat code to life. Right. I knew that if I did these things, I struggle. I don't want you to struggle. Right. And so because I don't want you to struggle, if you follow these paths and this guideline, you'll do fine. Yep. Now, me... Being the hard-headed child that I was, I had to, I had to, I had to build my own path. Tell them. And Anna, on the other hand, she was the one. She was the good child that followed all the life lessons. Yep. I watched yeah. them and I was like, "I'm not doing that." So I mean, but the thing is, like I said before, like that's where now being on the other side of it, being an adult and being grown and mature, 
because at the time I was young, I was stupid. I thought I had all the answers and, I, and, and now that I'm grown, I didn't have all the, I can t honestly say I didn't have all the answers, but I never, I can never say, and me and my, me and Anna have always, we talk about this all the time, you know, because there are certain individuals who shall remain nameless that, yes. you know, they, <laughs> it's always somebody else's fault. There's no accountability. And the, the, the conversation Anna, Anna and I have always come back to is, you know, we're our parents, the hundred percent, you know, like the greatest, not all the time, no. but did they give, did they provide us with the tools necessary to be successful, to get to that next level or, um, to, you know, as you said, unique in one episode about the launch pad and the leap pad, you know, did they provide us with the, 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 the right resources to have the launch pad to leap to the next level and, and the level after that and the level after that? Apps freaking loop like they did. Yes. You know, my parents sacrificed and they put, they put that time and effort into us, yes. all of us, all five of us. I now, mean, if we'll let them see that, though, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, and, and that's and that's one of the conversations that, you know, me and Anna, we, we've, you know, we've discussed as well in regards to, you know, what it means to carry this brand. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. my name is my name. Mm -hmm. And so my name being my name, it's, it's associated with excellence. It's not uh, associated with piss poorness. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, baby back bullshit. It's not. <laughs> and so, you know, it is, you know, it's associated with greatness and excellence. And so be, because of the people that came before me. And so I paved that path for the people like my niece that are coming after me. And, you know, at some point in time, you know, because my dad keeps telling me about this, about me not having no kids, but I have some kids. Listen, who is ready and willing? If you love ladies, Jesus, we're taking applications and, right um, now. Listen, y'all tripping. Y'all tripping. Y'all tripping. Put a message in the chat. That's right. I'm not wild. Y'all 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 Went over my guy. Okay. You like comic books. Listen, look, but look, but yeah. you know, any anyway, you know, like I you, you know, know I will I, I will yeah. say that, you know, these these lessons that my dad that you know that you know, you know, the, the head of our table as I call him, the head of our table, our tribal chief. I call him that when I'm trying to be petty. Um so the tribal chief. Hey, uh, 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 but people are calling me for their tribal chief. That's right. You know, you know, you know. He keeps because because you know he's a, he's like you know my dad. You know my dad's like, well, you gonna you gonna be head of this family at some point in time. You gonna need to do all this. And you know, like for me, you know, I be I be you know, I don't be taking him seriously when he be saying that. But you know, I hear him when he's saying it. I take it in. I take it in. I take in the lessons and I write down all the all the all the the Philip lessons that. You know, I need to be applying because, like I said, they they may not apply in that moment, but I'll be damned. There comes a time at some point in time, maybe in the next week, the next two weeks, next month, month and a half, year, that you know I go back and go back and review my notes and pass that test because I had the answers to it. Right. You know, because you know, one thing I will say that I I I pri you know I I applaud my dad for is he definitely is one of those people that he stays prayed up, he stays going to church. Um, he stays in his word and, you know, a lot of his actions are, you know, focused and directed by, by, you know, by God. And so I know that if he's saying it, it came some, it came from somewhere. He didn't just come up with that idea by himself. You know, he may have been asleep and it just kind of, you know, trickled on in there or he might've been taking a shower and trickled on in there something, but it came to him somehow. And he's giving me that lesson. So that lesson came from somewhere. So I probably need to write that down. Um, yeah. But well, getting those... Watching. Go ahead. What you're talking about, Raja, is really just number one, that intentionality, mm -hmm. but also teaching your children that they don't have to become an adult to be an active member of your unit. Oh, yeah. No, you are a valuable yeah. member of this mm -hmm. family and you play a huge part. I give my kid chores now and she's like, mommy, why why do I have to do this? Girl, I can sweep my own floors and I can wash my own dishes. Trust me, you're mm -hmm. not doing me no favors by doing them things. But 
what I want you to understand is you're a vital member to our house. And in being a vital member, one, there are certain expectations, right? We pull our weight. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't see another member of our team needing for something or hurting for something. We don't step up. Right. Yeah. Right. You, you don't do that. The lessons that we learn here, if I'm telling you something, it's because I love you not just as my daughter, because we're family. You're part of my team. So if you're going to be hurting, you don't think that that's going to affect me? If yep. you get out there and you're running with Crocs on without the activity, the, what is it, the little, the little strap mode. on the back? The sport mm -hmm. mode. And you slip out your Croc and you bust your <laughs> sport mode. If you don't got your Croc in sport mode and you bust your knee up, you don't yep. think that I'm going to feel some type of way. I'm probably going to feel sad, frustrated, like, God dang it. <laughs> Now you done, you done busted up your knee, you done tore up your pants, right. you done mussed up the crop. I, I'm Might like, God. Might be headed to the hospital. Might be headed to the hospital. Right. Then you right. done your tube. Like, what's yep. going on? Now, so many different things. Then so broke your arm. I, then broke your arm. I'm not telling you these things because I don't want you to have no fun. And, oh, you're just a kid. And when you grow up, you're going to be a part of the family. Like your dad says, no, one day you will stand in this position. Yeah. And so I want to make sure you're ready for that, right? One day, even if she, she says she's never having kids and she's going to live with me forever. Bro, we all know. we all thought that. I have let her know, boop, that's not going to happen. You got to go. <laughs> I said, baby, because you're not going to like my rules forever. Hey, and look, um, I'm going to need a house to come and chill at, okay? Well, yeah. Hey, look, these days, the way the economy is, man, I'm pretty sure... A lot of these Gen Xers and Zers, they're gonna be trying to move back home. It's don't say it. Don't say it. Because I can't. She, she got to get out. Now, you know what I'm saying? In I ten mean, years, I, folks all go with they with their parents. So Mia's gonna have a house and still come to your house for that one. She's already told me she's living. She's gonna just live with me, and I'm like, no, you got to get out, like. <laughs> Bro, I they 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 are they they are conjoined twins. Like I make jokes about them all the time being it's being like stuck together. It's this generation. I'm telling you, it's this generation yeah. of kids because they they swear that their life will forever be tied to yours and your no finances. no and no. Said, well, well, I said, well, I asked Rick, you gonna get a car? Well, um, yeah, mom, you gonna just buy it? No, I'm not. Well, I can buy That's one it. for you. I, you. You buy your car for you, and I'll get mine for me. Yes. Okay. Why, why oh. can't she just live with you forever? It's not appropriate to say on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I right. can see you talking about right. it for a split second. <laughs> you know how I roll. And we've so. already done a podcast on that. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all hey, know how kids I get married. Play. Kids yeah, get married, from, move their spouse in your house. Look, yeah, kids get no. married, move their spouse in your house. Yeah. Folks no. do that. Man, no, I haven't I seen it down see, south, especially. Even, Everybody up one that, Even hey. in that, I told her, you are always, like my parents told me, I have a key to my mom and dad's house. I right. said, as long as I have a house, you will have a key to it. You are always welcome anywhere where I lay my head. And if you're not, then I'm not going to be there. You're right. always welcome to dwell, to be where I am. But there does come a time where I want you to go out and experience life on your yes. own. Yes. I have, I've invested a lot of time, energy, and money. <laughs> you, gotta get out there. you can survive. Okay? Yep. Right. And when you get out there, I don't ever, and I talked about this, I think, on the last episode, on one of our previous episodes. When you teach somebody, when you give them principles from an abundance mindset and not a scarcity mindset, they thrive much more. Oh, I for sure. To right. feel like, you know, I could go home anytime. I could do this. Like, right. Yeah, this is nothing. When I left my parents' house, I always knew I could go back. My dad would tell me, you know, you could come back. I said, why do you want me to come back? I tell him my cell phone bill is too high. You know, you know, I can pay. You could just come back on the family line. Okay. But, but one of the things though about that mindset though is is that not only does it it teach you that you can always go back, but it also teaches you you can always move forward. You can make it. Mm -hmm. That you yes. that you got this. You you're prepared for whatever comes your way because you were prepared for it. Yeah, right. and I want I tell her even she's nine. She's not gonna move out no time soon. But I told her when the time comes. 
you are going to have everything you need. You're going to, and you're going to do well. She wants to own a gas station. She's like, you're going to, listen, you're going to be a gas station owner. What, what kind of gas station? They're going to they gonna have like the, the food bar in there because them gas stations be jumping. She, she will because my, uh-huh. my child loves to eat. It's, it's okay, okay. A, a damn one bakery attached to it because she loves <laughs> chocolate and desserts. So no one her is going to have a little bakery. But she's, I said, you're going to be well off. You have yeah. no need to live with me. Right. Yep. He get into existence. Yeah. So I think that that's something yeah. just from a young age, pouring into our children and not letting them go, well, I'm just a child. I don't have any say so. I ask her what she wants for dinner. My husband, I don't know why you just ask her. She knows what she wants. There's no point in me cooking something she don't want to eat. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oof. My daughter is involved in picking meals for, you know, when we go grocery shopping, I need your buy-in because I'm, I don't want to waste money on a meal that you're not going to eat and you don't like the way it looks and it smells weird. No. Cause if, if you say mommy, I want this for dinner and I buy the ingredients and I cook it, then you got to eat that. <laughs> so like i i need the buy-in i i need your you know we're like you said like we're a team we're a unit i don't do this all on my own now were raj and i raised like that no absolutely not what my mom made for dinner was what she made for dinner and you better eat it because if you don't eat it you ain't getting nothing else to eat you know what i'm saying my dad himself has said right my dad's like i don't ask children below the age of 10 their opinion because he's like you have none um but they do they have an opinion and why make it difficult you know for everyone in the household when you could literally just ask your kid hey what do you think about this and sometimes you get some of the best ideas from these little kids that are watching you doing the things that you're doing because you know they're they're not they're not necessarily thinking along the same lines you're thinking they're thinking maybe like a little off to the to the right or to the left so why not ask their opinion i think that's a good idea yep yep absolutely i mean a lot of times with kids they have insight Mm -hmm. that you don't because you're old and tired most of the time Yes, you know, they still they have fresh eyes to a lot of things that we think oh, that's boring. No, they have right. fresh eyes. I ask my kid, how do things look? Do you like my hair? Does this makeup look crazy? Yes, so she'll be like, oh, mommy, them nails, I mean, them look, those nails are looking real ghetto. It's a lot of colors, and I like a lot of colors, but she'll be like, it's just too many. Yeah, yeah. It's too right. many colors. Right. It's it's not doing it, mommy, but. He's a vital part of what we do. Now, I do un- explain to her sometimes because I am the adult and I have yep. a bit more knowledge than you, you will not get input on certain things. Right. It's not an input time every time. Right. But when I ask for your input, please get it. Yep. Yeah. And that's the same. That's the same conversation I have with my child. Like, sometimes I'm not going to explain anything to you. Sometimes it's going to be purely because I said so. So, I mean, you know, you know, that's that's kind of how I look at it. But you know, some, some, sometimes I'm not gonna ask your opinion. Sometimes when it comes to like, you know, she was just in a school play and she's telling me all of the types of things she wants for her costume. At the end of the day, I had to make an adult decision, and I can't just go with what you want because that's not what the director of the play said. So I gotta just go buy this thing. And if you're upset, sucks to suck. But uh, you're going to be wearing that. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that teaches them because one day they'll yeah. be at a job. Mm-hmm. And I tell them, I get this. I said, one day you will be at a job and you're not going to like everything that somebody says. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're going to be in a classroom. Man, that's a big she part of adulting. College. She mm-hmm. says, I'm going to college. She's already at nine. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to go to your school or if I'm going to go to my auntie's school because she loves my sister. I'm trying to just, I'm stuck between the two. But I said, you're going to get to college and somebody's going to say something you don't like. You right. can't have a meltdown because you don't yeah. like it. Yeah. I said, no, no, no. You can't just cry because things didn't go your way. And yeah. you can't just disobey. I teach her now at night. Di- with disobedience comes pain for as long as you live. I said, right. if I speed and I get pulled over, it's going to hurt my pocket to pay that, that traffic ticket. It's also going to hurt my insurance. Yep. I'm going to pay. I said, so pain is not always physical. Sometimes the pain 
it hurts your, your wallet. Sometimes it hurts your heart where like your feelings just be hurt because you did something you wasn't supposed to. Now you're in a situation. I right. Like, it, you have to understand, yes, there are consequences, but when I am choosing to be disobedient, that's a choice. Just yep. like I can choose to be obedient. And when you do disobey, it's that I don't trust that my parents know what's best for me. I said, am right. I perfect? Do me and daddy know everything? She's like, yeah. I said, no, we don't. We don't know everything. Let me go ahead and pop that bubble. We don't. However, the things that we do know and the stuff that we tell you, it was given with the best intentions for you. Right. So if I'm telling you something, it's with my insight to say, hey, sweetheart, that's not the best decision for you. And maybe that will change based on who you are. But that could be, that's not the best decision for you right now. Right. right. Running with your clocks without sports mode is not the best decision right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Eating tons of candy is not a good decision right now. But when you get older, as your immune system grows, as you become more coordinated with your limbs, you can run without, you know, sports mode activated on your crops and you can eat more candy because you have a better immune system. But while you're around germy kids all day at nine, it's probably not good to do all of that. And yeah. so I sometimes I do explain it to her, but sometimes I tell her, I can't explain it to you because that's not life. Yeah. Sometimes God tells us to do things and he doesn't always tell us all of the details. But he does lead it with the expectation. I've impressed upon you to do it this way. I've impressed upon you to treat this person this way. And it's for your benefit. It's always for your benefit. When your boss tells you something, it's for your benefit. Get in the habit of doing it without having all of the answers. We have a guest. Hi, friend. Hello. What a cutie pie. He's like, you're not attentioning me. So he's been snoring this whole time and now he's up and he's been bothering me. Y'all ain't see me looking behind and trying to push his face back. This is what's going on right now. He's adorable. Go ahead and parent him. See, he said, see, yeah. he's being a great parent. Yeah. Look at you. So we're going to end the conversation here. Um, we're trying not to overthink it signing out. I'm RJ. I'm Unique. And I'm Khalil. If you happen to like this episode, we can be found on YouTube as Try Not to Overthink It. Uh, we drop content weekly, so if you stop by the YouTube channel, we ask that you like, share, subscribe, leave comments, leave comments, leave comments, um, and turn your notifications on because we do uh, put out content every week. If you prefer to listen to this episode instead of watch it, we can be found pretty much everywhere that a audio file can be can be located. We're found on Spotify, Anchor. Uh, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, um, Audible, pretty much everywhere that audio file can be found, we can be listened to. And but you know, to? but but watch, but you know what? Do both. Do both. Maybe daddy. Yes. I cannot with you people. Not today. Not today, Satan. Not today. Roger, not with single comments. Not today. Not today. No, we're not. We're, things, but you can email us. Oh my gosh! I'm not going to you guys. Um, but uh, if you if you if you happen to like the content, we ask that you like, share, subscribe. Um, if you stop by the YouTube channel, uh, make sure that you you know share share and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and even watch the episode and then listen to it. You know that helps us out tremendously. We're uh, steadily growing the community, um, and we just want you guys to continue to be a part of our journey and become part of the tribe and and participate in the conversations with us. So we are signing out and we will catch you in the next episode later. Mm -hmm.